So we will open up uh, what may be our last session of the day. It's been a rather busy schedule. We are here to discuss and review HMH contracts with Jessica and uh, from Public Works, our director. So lay it on us. Okay, well, this one is interesting because in December, when I learned that Jim Kaysen would be leaving Shoshone County as our director, um, and there was a possibility that I might be in the running to take this place. Um, I thought, I'm a details gal, so I like to make sure that everything is in order. And knowing it was coming up to the first of the year, I wanted to see where we were at with our general engineering contract, which HMH is kind of who we've been dealing with. So um, I did a little bit of back and forth and um, met with Ben a few times, kind of talked to him about previous contracts um, and where we needed to be as far as Shoshone County to be in the box to be in compliance with Idaho Code. And Ben did some back and forth with um, the director of the procurement department for Ada County. Um, he's, he's kind of the benchmark of, of who you talk to um, when you have questions because he, handles all of the procurement for Ada County and um, was able to give Ben a little bit of guidance because really it's um, Idaho, Idaho Code 67-2320, which, which pertains to this. Um, our other contracts with HMH or other engineering firms or, or anything like that um, are a little bit different. They're, they're all in compliance from what I've been able to tell. They've all gone out to um, RFP request for proposal um, or you know whatever needs to happen and then they've gone through the process and been, have been awarded the contract. Um, our general engineering contracts kind of fell through the cracks a little bit from what I can tell. Um, every year there was an attempt to sign an annual contract um, between Shoshone County and HMH and this even goes back to prior you know the the previous public works director and the public works director prior to that um, but according to Idaho code that doesn't stand up and and when Ben was really looking at that what needs to happen for for general engineering contracting um, it needs to go out to RFQ which is request for qualifications these um, for the general stuff it needs to be vetted by qualifications rather than price you know request for proposal is going to be a proposal which is going to include price and RFQ um, you know price later in the process as a consideration but really um, you want who's most qualified and and in talking to Ben we kind of re-examined some of the uh, you know contracts for general services and sometime mid to late last year with the previous board um, when they had restructured the planning and zoning department, they were they had a meeting. I didn't sit in on any of those, so this is just what what I understand. So I don't I'm not you know speaking from from any minutes or anything like that. But it was my understanding that that the board um, decided they needed to pick an engineering firm to oversee some of the floodplain management and things like that for uh, planning and zoning, and they put that out for RFP request for proposal, and that was the process that they used. Um, and then a contract was drafted, and I don't know, you know, the status of that, but it was more specific to planning and zoning operations. Um, and so Ben and I talked a little bit about that. What really ideally should happen from a legal standpoint is that Shoshone County should have one contract for general services, more like a, um, an umbrella type of, of contract. Um, where the different departments that might need the general services uh, for engineering, you know, could work off of that contract. So the, the county isn't trying to manage all of these little piecemeal contracts that maybe some are done in September, some are done in December, um, and it's just one contract. So what Ben recommended to me, because what I brought him was a, a just a, a blank draft of what would have been like a duplicate of the previous year signed um, between Shoshone County and HMH. And Ben said, I'm recommending that we don't move forward with signing this contract at this time. And at that point, you know, the, the new board was going to be coming in. Um, he said, we really need to bring this up to, to the board that's coming in um, and let them know that we need to put this out for RFP or RFQ qualifications. 
Um, and what happens with that is then that stands, the qualification vetting stands for five years. You have to do that once every five years. Um, where it gets kind of tricky, if you really look into Idaho Code 67-2320, is it talks about, it really talks a lot about a greater than or less than the sum of $50,000. So um, it really talks about, every, everybody knows if the, if the contract, if you're gonna be doing more than $50,000 worth of services through this, this firm per year, um, everybody knows it needs to go out. It needs to go out for you know, RFQ and it needs to happen and that's pretty clear. Um, it does address what happens if it's under. And if it's under, where it really wasn't clear and they kind of clarified that in the last couple years is um, it still needs to go out. It still needs to go out. They need to be vetted for qualifications. Um, you know, as far as our department is concerned and I'm not privy to any other department's budgets, um, but our our department is budgeted for $23,500 for engineering services. That's our general stuff. That's not our, our separate project stuff that we're funded for or anything like that. Um, so, so as far as our department was concerned with kind of the gray areas of the law, we were compliant. And, and so I think that's why it was always kind of the annual attempt at a contract. Georgetown County was trying to be compliant. Um, just kind of unbeknownst to us is my understanding is that um, you know the wording changed a little bit in the last couple of years just to clarify that because there was so much confusion can it be a once a year contract can it be once every five years does it need to go out um, but at the end of the day what I really want to do is tidy things up I think as far as contracts as a whole I've talked with Tammy a little bit um, I, I think as a whole Shoshone County needs to do better um, as far as communication and and Tammy really like we're on the same page and and she's talked to a lot of the different departments um, The contract process it, it's really a process and it involves multiple departments and um, You know at the end of the day nobody can sign contracts other than the board I can't sign it as the public works director I mean I can sign small agreements under five thousand dollars because there is a provision for the public works director um, but but for the most part, contracts, they have to be signed. You know, if anybody's gonna be obligating Shoshone County to anything, it's gotta be the board. And and from there, it's gotta be done in a meeting. It's gotta be signed. And then they have to be recorded, and Tammy needs a copy of that. Um, and I think, historically, over the years, I think through the changes and, and new people coming in and maybe not getting some training or, or lack of communication, um, you know, the, the seats change all the time in Shoshone County. And I just think now is a great time We've got a lot of new people in here at the same time. Let's make sure we're all on the same page. Let's make sure all the other department heads and elected officials are on the same page concerning contracts. This just kind of opened up the door for this. Um, and I think it's just a good time to refresh our practices on contracts. Because it is, you know, we've, we've got little things that touch on it. I mean, there are every, most of the people who were awarded funding for the LATCF, um, were, they were provided by calling copies of the Shoshone County procurement policy, both federal and non-federal. And, and it kind of touches on that in there, but really, you know, now's the time to make sure everybody's on the same page. Um, getting back to our issue with, with our engineering for general services, um, we, sooner than later, we need to get moving on this process. Um, and, and Ben recommended that um, I bring this to you guys in a public meeting and kind of let you know where we're at with things. And um, let's get the process started for RFQ. Um, ben said his office would help us out with that because it is something that we have to you know, put something together for. Um, and there are some templates. Um, Ada County said they would help us out with that. They would help Ben um, with some wording and some templates. And then it has to be advertised um, for a certain length of time. And then what happens is um, companies that are interested will submit their qualifications packets to you guys. Um, and that will be, you know, you guys will look through them and, and probably have some interviews with, um, with those companies and, and then what we can do after that is, is compile a list um, of two to five companies and, and you can select them from that list. Then once you have the list of qualified um, firms, then you can enter into a contract with them. Um, but, but then the ones that you've qualified on that list, that list will stay active for five years. 
And so I think it's important for us to start that process now because we certainly, now that we're aware that we are not really completely compliant with Idaho code, we need to make steps to move forward uh, to become compliant fully. So um, from what I can tell, it's it's certainly not, and looking back through your notes and things like that, it's, it's not for lack of trying to be compliant. I just think um, maybe guidance and uh, communication with the different departments has been lacking a little bit. So what do we need to do let's, to start the process? So my recommendation would be um, let's get with Ben first and foremost because this really um, needs to be overseen by by him or his department to make sure that we are, you know, with this being our first, you know, real proper time with the mm -hmm. RFQ, we want to make sure to start off on the right foot. Um, and then I think Ben can reach out to um, his contact with Ada County. Uh, and make sure that we have any templates or anything like that, um, and then kind of get the process started. Ben did say that, um, I said, does now, I said, does the RFQ, is that going to come from the Public Works Department? Is that gonna come from the board? Who, who needs to kind of initiate this process? And he said, really, it's for Shoshone County, it needs to come from the board. And um, he recommended to me that if I can assist in any way or help with any of the legwork, you know, I'm more than happy to do that. I just want to really start, I mean, my plan is to be the public works director for the next 20 years. So I want to make sure we're doing everything right from the start. I want to make sure we're all in compliance and we're working with the other departments and we're doing everything legally that we can do. Legally would be nice. Legal's good. I like legal. I like yeah. black and white. I'm not a fan of gray. So um, I think there's enough black and white to follow. Yeah. Idaho code is, you know, it, it's interesting and, and you can give it to five different people and, and they'll have five different interpretations. interpretations yeah. um, at the end of the day, it, it really comes to the board and the legal department, you know, what yeah, what your decisions are going to be for Shoshone County. But um, in, in mine and Ben's discussions um, over the last month, I really feel that RFQ needs to happen. We need to put it out for qualifications. Um, and that's and noticing it out. Yes, paper. yep, that's going to be a proper legal notice in the right. paper, and and that was done, um, you know, on behalf of the planning and zoning department, but, um, you know, and I guess that's something, too, that, that maybe you'll need to talk to Ben about. I don't know, because I don't do anything with planning and zoning, um, you know, how their contract is, and, and, and you know, should we, should we do something that's, that's more umbrella. global, like an mm -hmm. umbrella, mm -hmm. um, instead of having these piecemealed out. And um, that one went out for RFP, and RFQ really is, everything in here is qualifications, qualifications. They, they specify the word qualifications in Idaho code. Um, there, there's an Idaho qualification-based selection facilitation council of Idaho, and they've got a great website that kind of talks about that, and it's, it's RFQ all over it. It's, it's all about the qualifications when it comes to this, because now, if it was a specific project that we were trying to bring an engineering firm on for, that's different. That's going to be RFP. It's going to be request for proposal. But because this is general services engineering, that's what's how we get our list of who we're able to work with. Correct. Yep. Okay. What's your opinion, Tammy, on the umbrella contract? I like it. Makes sense to you. Mm -hmm. It does because I think we can draw for it. We don't have. I mean, everybody's got different things they might have to have engineering solid waste out possibly. Mm -hmm. And that way definitely. the board doesn't have to go through an RFQ every single time a department needs it. it because be what we had looked at was, um, you know, originally what we had looked at with Ben is if the county has already put out for RFP, this was before he kind of dug into Ada County and, and what their take on things was, um, you know, could we amend the, the P&Z contract to be something like that. But, but the P&Z contract, the wording was very specific and it was very tailored to planning and, and the flood stuff and, and it really wasn't for general services. So, um, and when was that contract done, the P&Z one? You know, it was drafted in like March. Yeah, I mean, it was sometime this last this last year, and so I think that's kind of been a, a problem. Is is these things, these processes gain momentum, and then they, you know, change hands, and there's these different departments involved. 
And then when it comes down to it, um, and and you know we all, Tammy and I met to fill a public records request, and um, and then we're looking and we're finding all of these maybe half signed, not fully executed contracts, nothing recorded with her, um, and and it actually came the the. The request came at a really great time because this was coming down the pipe anyways. That's a good idea. You know, I had already started the meetings with them late December, and um, you know, Tammy and I have had a, a couple talks about it, and it's really just time to get everybody on the same page. It's a good idea. So, yeah. mm -hmm. I agree. So let me suggest a, a solution might be that we get a meeting with the board, with Ben, with you, with P and Z. And whoever else we can determine would use engineering. I think solid sheriff's ways. office may eventually need some engineering services over there. So invite the problems that they have with the building. Invite anybody who might have a need sure. to that, and so we're all on the same page. Sure. With the idea of the umbrella contract then would flow into now we need the individual parts of the contract. Sure. Does that yeah. sound that reasonable sounds, direction? Yeah. Yep. Or does that sound like it would address? What you think I think so too. I'll definitely feel more comfortable um, once once we get through the process and we have a signed contract. <laughs> but but that does take a little bit of time. I mean that's not something you want to just throw on a piece of paper and and put it out. I mean we just really want to make sure that we're yeah. yeah. But let's get we need to get started well, this right is away on this. Step one. This is step one. Yeah. I'm going to direct the clerk to help us with that. Mm -hmm. Getting that group together and talking with Tammy and Jessica and make sure we're including everybody who needs to be a part of that okay any further questions or comments from anybody here at the table it's a good step forward yeah. i think we're going to be able to yeah get things made. i think okay. getting legal is a yeah. good battle cry let's exactly. get, get legal yep. and clean let's be clean so we have like i like clean i'd like you know <laughs> i'd like to know that tammy has a copy of everything that yes be nice to yeah. Well, and it's, it sure makes her job a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Jasmine's, yeah. yeah. Communication and going and mm -hmm. Mine when I go ask her stuff, so. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, let me open it to the any public comments or questions. I oh, like. of course. <laughs> what would you like to say, add, Mr. Beaner? What's irritating about this whole thing is I started trying to get this contract two to three years ago, and nobody figured it out that there's no contract. It was unbelievable to me. And the other part of it is, is I believe it's like $1.6 million we've done with HMH over the four years, maybe it was longer than that. And there's no contract. Matt, can I ask the question? Yeah. Um, the one point. Yeah, I don't million know dollars. how much was helping. Sure, I was gonna say, cause yeah. normally that would be different than general right. services because right. those, those we could produce those contracts. Right. Yeah, right. those have been out for, for RFP, um, yeah. for the sure. The so other ones I've got from LTAC is Marble Creek, I believe, was an LTAC, uh, mm -hmm. Jim Hill, and the Pine Creek ones. Okay. So it adds up to about 140,000. Sure, and I think the I think the request was like from, was it 2019? To right. 2021, 2021 but current. That's where you're at, at 1.6. Sure, okay. The other question is, is where is it hidden in the budget that pays for this? For it, HMH. Your the budget, engineering? Your is budget. that our roads budget yeah. that you got on top? You've got 20, or, I don't want to make it personal. No, 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 I'm happy to ask questions. When I say you do, I mean your No, department. yeah, our department, sure. <laughs> you're right, it has $23,000 or something mm -hmm. like that in for engineering. Where, where's the rest of it at? So the the other stuff would be project specific, and so some of those, um, you know, would go through uh, some different funds, or um, you know, would be set up differently. Normally, those types of projects don't go in and out of roads unless there is a specific line on there that addresses the um, what, what, the project. Wouldn't it be under a general contractor for or the contractor engineering contracts? So normally the, the line that has the, the engineering contracts, mm -hmm. that is where we would put our general um, engineering uh, invoices through. Um, the other ones would go through the project line or if there was a separate fund that was created for those for that project. Normally when we, historically when we had set those up, since Tammy and I have been working together because I 
done a lot with the financial stuff as as my previous role with Tammy. You know, we would meet when there would be a separate funding source that came into play, and then we would decide for auditing and accounting purposes what the best way to set that up would be. Does it need a separate fund? Is it a separate grant? Normally, if it's a separate grant, needs a separate fund. It'll go into a separate. It won't go in and out of roads. So our budget would not reflect that with our our fund too, which is our roads budget. So we're we're just a question. Separate mm -hmm. funds completely. Separate funds completely, but where would that show up in the budget? Or where it would that show up? It's a separate fund that's outside of the budget because we don't budget for that. Mm -hmm. We budget for a match, which would come out of the roads for the match mm -hmm. piece of it. But the rest of the project's reimbursable, so okay. we don't we don't put them into our general fund. Okay. It's an outside. They're yeah. similar to it's fire outside funds too. grants and things like that. They're mm -hmm. totally yeah. separate, not part of the budget at all. Okay. Matt, did you have another? Uh, last thing, you guys are talking about doing the umbrella. We might have a harder time finding a contractor that's going to do an umbrella. Some of them might not be planning and zoning people. They're just engineers and want to. You might do it both mm -hmm. ways just to see what. Yeah, you we get. might have to see who gets through mm -hmm. the RFQ. Right. And to see mm -hmm. what the options and their capabilities are. Right. Good point. Good point. Mm -hmm. Eric Conley? I have a comment. Jessica, the county is very lucky to have you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes I'm a little too detail oriented. I um, yeah. tend to drive people crazy, yeah. but no, that's you, good. you yeah. care. Yeah. You awesome. care, and that's yeah. important. Yeah. 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 Appreciate it. Yeah. All right, so we're asking our clerk to help us set up a meeting with Ben and the affected departments. And of course, that should include you. That should include maybe the sheriff's office. We need to reach out to them and figure that out. The only other one I see is county manager. It's all waste. It's all waste. Could, right? could be an obvious, obvious one. And so we will get that ball rolling as, and that should be as soon as possible since we kind of found out we're not yep. in compliance with Idaho code. Lucky for you guys, we can rewrite those conditions because we found this well. Not signed by the board. Should and are supposed to be in the league. Okay. So what should yeah. That would just fall into this board. Yes, that would fall right into that good. Not point. just yeah. planning yeah. zone, but all of it. Yeah. Not just a general agreement either. Yeah. Let's clean it up. No. Okay. Thanks everybody. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate I the initiative. Meeting adjourned. <laughs> That's your favorite yeah. words. <laughs>